Hello, howdy, sup? All right, mate. Aloha, good day. This is Travel Tuesdays for foodie fans. Bryce Morrison is your host, and I'm Carla, your colorful commentator. However you greet your friends, we're excited you're here for the journey as we take you across these United States and around the world to find the very best in food and wine. Join us every Tuesday as we interview foodie travelers, award-winning bartenders, restaurateurs, and more to find out their go-to bars and restaurants and how to find them. Enjoy the show! <coughs> Hello, foodie fans, and welcome to another episode of Travel Tuesdays with four foodie fans. Tonight's guest is Blake Morrison. You might recognize some resemblance. He is my oldest son, and he actually manages a small town pizzeria in Carbondale, Illinois, home of the Salukis. So without further ado, let's bring on Blake and see what he can help us with when it comes to finding the very best in food and wine anywhere in the world. Hey, Blake. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. I know that it was a little bit of a rush getting here from work, so... I appreciate the effort. No problem. We were, uh, the, the manager was able to take over a little bit earlier than normal. I see you've got your shirt on. I do. I figured no reason to change out of it if we're going to be talking about Quattro's. Well, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of different foodie places, uh, but tell us a little bit about Quattro's. Well, uh, it's pretty famous in this country anyway. Uh, it's gotten overseas in some cases um we've got the deep pan style pizza it is not deep dish it is not chicago style pizza it's deep pan which means that it is a thicker pan pizza think your cheap uh, uh domino's pizza but much better quality and thicker it's just a a really unique style of pizza and people talk about it around the country our facebook page uh gets people all the time when are you going to open a franchise in such and such city uh i've seen our cups and some of our half-baked pizzas go to alaska i've seen cups in other countries it, it's pretty well known that that's pretty epic that people are taking your cups all the way to alaska where's that come from well, I mean, this is the cup here. I'll put it in for the video. Um, it's kind of an iconic cup. It's unique. Nobody's got yellow plastic cups with a Quattro's insignia that are highly functional, dishwash safe. Um, I mean, <laughs> you, you sound like you're selling a cup. <laughs> well, I, in a way, we are. You know, uh, the, the cup is a part of the business. That is what people remember when they think Quattro's. Oh, I got to take my cup home with me and you know when I was 20 years old starting my first apartment out of the dorms and I was trying to stock the shelves um, I was able to get free cups when I got my pizza and a lot of people just still have them they still stock their cupboards with these cups and then they move out of the area they take them with them they can't part with them and it instills these fond memories in them that's that's kind of where I was going with that so you're a college town right we are a college town, the home of the SIU Salukis, Southern Illinois University. It, this, this town, um, it, it needs the university and the university needs us. So that's how it gets to Alaska is you have people graduate from SIU and they travel all over the world. They start their careers elsewhere and the fond memories of Quattro's, right? Absolutely. The, the college town definitely helps us spread around the world because you know, the, the majority of the people that remember us from 30 years ago are people that went to college here. I'm going to jump in and talk about the quality of the pizza for a minute. That pizza that you brought us, you drove it all the way from Southern Illinois to Orlando, Florida in a cooler. 13 hour drive. 13 hour drive, left it for us. And then I baked it and it got a little bit well done. You know, operator I, error. I, I wasn't used to the oven I was using and all that. It was still an amazing pizza, even though I slightly overcooked it, it was still really good. And that's, and that's the newest pizza we have on our menu a basil pesto pizza. Um, that's the newest concept that we're working with, and it still sits for 
13 hours. I mean, we freeze it, but it's, it sits for 13 hours and travels. We free, we half bake it. We, we only make it halfway as to what we normally would do. That way, when you reheat it, you're not overcooking it to reheat it. You're finishing the cook while you reheat it. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. Maybe mm-hmm. that's why she burned it. She didn't realize that. <laughs> but I didn't hey. Burn it. <laughs> she didn't burn it. Sorry. Um, I, I got put in my place. The way I normally ask these questions is a little weird because I happen to know a whole lot about you since you are my son. But uh, hometown eats. I, you consider Carbondale. I know you you have the fondness in your heart for Jacksonville, but you left there very early. So I, mm-hmm. I would say that Carbondale is probably the hometown, right? Yes. So obviously Quattro's, but yes. what else? What t- tell us about? What uh, you- so I actually had friends. I had friends visit from Orlando uh, just a few months ago for my birthday, and there are a few significant places that I feel I have to take anybody that comes to visit. For starters, we have to talk about the wine trail, the Shawnee wine trail of Southern Illinois, talking about a dozen wineries or more, um, each with their own unique takes. The the grapes are grown here in Southern Illinois and turned into wine. Um, You can make a whole day out of it and still not hit every winery. You could spend a whole day in one winery or you could go to 13 wineries in one day. And I tell you what, that turns into a quite a night. It's beautiful. It's rolling hills. It's delicious wine. I am not, wine is not my favorite um, out of all the types of drinks. I, I'm more of a beer person myself, but I will spend a whole day drinking wine when I'm in Southern Illinois and, and I go out to the wineries. It's just, they make really good stuff. So do you have a favorite? Save All Blanc at Owl Creek Winery. When I do drink wine, I can't go overly sweet. I'm, I'm a semi-dry person myself, and the Save All is just the right balance of flavor and not too sweet. Uh, I could drink a couple of bottles of that for sure. So I don't even know if you realize this, but uh, when I was in marketing at the business school there at SIU, I actually did a marketing plan for Owl Creek Winery. So I did that's not know that. as well. Yeah. I, I loved Owl Creek and um, they apparently have moved. They have. My understanding, they actually live very close to the new location and uh, they just built it from the ground up and they, they wanted to expand. They wanted to get bigger. Uh, they wanted more space. They wanted more opportunity for live music and they had the land outside of their home. So they built it and it's gorgeous. You and I talked recently about that, but and my my concern was that it would lose its charm because they didn't have a great location, but they had a very charming location. And You're talking you about the, the split level decking yeah. out back and, and being able to sit on the deck and look down at other tables and look up at other tables and got this massive oak tree that the deck is built around. They still have the same concept at their new location, just a little That's bigger. Awesome. That's awesome. They knew what they had going for them, and they took advantage. Yeah. So, you know, the, the funny thing about that, and, you know, we talk to people who've traveled all over the world, and uh, obviously our, our website is foodandwinecruiseplanners.com. We have a little, bit, a little bit of a focus on wine. We like bourbon, too. I happen to be drinking old-fashioned. But uh, the thing about the, the wine is – you don't really think about Southern Illinois or at least people who aren't around from around there or have never been there. Don't think of Southern Illinois. Right. But it's a force to be reckoned with. There's absolutely few options there. Yes. Uh, So I've actually seen some articles before, just some listicles, if you will. Uh, I think the Southern Illinois Shawnee wine trail is generally ranked like number three in the country. Obviously you've got Napa Valley is you're not going to compete with that. I, I think uh, upstate New York, if I remember correctly, has generally the number two ranked. Shawnee Wine Trail is usually number three there. That's wild. I, I didn't even realize that. Number three. That's pretty impressive. Well, when you've got the setup that we've got, you're a rural location. You've got cabins all over play, the place. You've got the views. Uh, you've got 
it, it's just it is charming and and there's enough of them that it actually can make for a whole week if you really want it to i mean if you want a vacation in just a quiet area and you want to spend a night in a cabin in a hot tub with a glass of wine and then you want to spend the next day going to three different wineries it could easily do that uh in fact my wife sarah she talks about we live here and she talks about renting a cabin so she could go sit in a hot tub and drink some wine i, I was gonna ask okay, you I'm more gonna about go that. with her oh. <laughs> i'm going with sarah you let me know when okay but, all right but you're right people don't actually know about the southern illinois I, i'm from southeast missouri not far from that i remember before i met your dad somebody's like oh yeah we're going to the winery rhinoways in illinois and i went what wine, wine comes from the supermarket i don't know what you're talking about you know but then i went and i was like wow this is amazing and then i met your dad and we went a lot more <laughs> so i i was going to ask you about that the the lodging you mentioned lodging with jacuzzi. I mean, that kind of has to go hand in hand. You have to have, if, if you're going to be a destination, there have to be places to go. There's cabins all over the place. And they actually, you know, we researched trying to get a cabin. When my friends came from Florida, we thought about trying to rent one together. But they actually have such a focus on creating a romantic environment that most of these cabins, they don't even let more than two people stay there or more than one family stay there because they don't want, you know, we're right next to a college town. They don't want a bunch of college kids deciding to rent a cabin and then trashing the place, having a party until 4 a.m., uh, breaking glass. They, they want a romantic, quiet environment for a couple of people to come out. That's pretty awesome. So, I mean, you know, obviously with us, in the travel industry, we're always looking for places that that people can go. We're working with a couple right now that want to head up to Nashville, Tennessee. It's only and about three hours from us. I, I know. Yeah. And uh, so we're always looking for that next great destination. And right now with coronavirus, um, you know, world travel has, has gone down a little bit. People are more interested in domestic travel yes so i mean you would say that southern illinois is definitely a destination right i absolutely believe that uh, my friends that came in february they came last february too they liked it that much they were completely now i like to think i'm a kind of cool person too and it's worth visiting me but they also just liked this area so much i mean they were willing to spend on the travel to come visit southern illinois because they had such a good time so you talked about the wineries. Where else? What what else can you do? Uh, in Carbondale alone, I can name a couple of restaurants that I think are really excellent. Um, we, again, being a university town, we have a lot of diversity. Uh, so we've got an excellent Thai food place, Thai Taste. I eat there probably about once every two weeks. Well, you know, up until coronavirus, I would eat there for lunch about once every two weeks. New Kahala, fantastic Chinese food. They make everything from scratch. I mean, down to cutting the veggies to go into your dish. It, the only complaint I have is because they make everything from scratch on a busy night, it might be three hours to get your order. There's a couple of good breweries popping up in this area as well. Um, we have, in fact, Bryce, my dad, when he visited, uh, he posted about Route 51 Brewing Company because they had some really unique flavors, some delicious food. I think the one he really liked was the mango habanero uh, beer. There's a lot of stuff popping up in this area and a lot of expansion that makes it really, I mean, they visited, my friends visited for three days and I could not get everything in. So the thing about that brewery, what impressed me, obviously the ambiance, it's, it's a, it's a destination. It's, it, it's eclectic. Yeah. Yeah. But the food, it, it was, it was photogenic, um, mm -hmm. but it's also very, very good. Yes. And, you know, it's not the kind of thing we talk all the time, you know, UK has a bad rap because people think I'm going to go see Big Ben and then I'm going to go somewhere else because they don't think of the UK as having great food. And that's, that's the truth. People will actually put London on one day and then go to Scotland or, or Ireland or somewhere else because they think 
there's nothing UK can offer. Now that has changed a lot and UK is working very hard to improve culinary destination. But that goes to show you that if people will actually avoid a place because the food isn't what they want, food is really important. It is. And, and Southern Illinois, as you've stated, I, that place, the, the Area 51, I was impressed. Route, route, route 51 route. Brewing Company. That's right. Area 51 is a paintball place up there, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Route 51 Brewery. Yes. Uh, sure. I, th I think it's Route 51 Brewing Company. Okay. I think that's their full name. Now we're going to have to add you to the group and we need you to share that and, and everything else, you know, your contact information. I got to ask you, I, I hear these stories all the time. I just read something about it the other day and I was talking to somebody I know, Angie, and she commented that uh, she can't believe that her son entered the food industry because <laughs> she remembers he would ask her to make a sandwich. And, you know, I know all of you kids played around a little bit in the kitchen, but you were never really truly foodies. How did you end up heading down this direction? Uh, a little bit of luck, a little bit of coincidence, a little bit of that was always somewhat my desire, not necessarily the food part of the hospitality industry, but I've always been interested in hospitality since 14 years old. It's been my interest to own my own business. Uh, that's still an interest for me, but um, I wrote a business plan. I mean, a, a freshman year of high school business plan, but I wrote a business plan for a restaurant at 14 years old. A few years later, I started talking about miniature golf. Um, I've always loved the Orlando hospitality area with uh, family entertainment beyond just the theme parks, but also miniature golf and laser tag and bowling and just the infinite amount of things that you can do. The, the McDonald's on International Drive has an arcade. I find it just so interesting and so fun to be able to take your kids to do something new every weekend or every summer. Um, and that's always been a calling for me is to make sure that somebody gets a great experience, whether it is in food or it's in um other areas of hospitality. Uh, in fact, I worked at Universal Studios Orlando for a year before I accepted this manager job at Quattro's Pizza. I tell you what, for 98% of the rest of Southern Illinois, it would have been difficult for me to think about coming back to Southern Illinois. Not that I don't love this area, but I, I love hospitality so much and I really wanted to be really in Orlando. But for Quattro's Pizza, the reputation and the standards that they hold, it was worth it to me to come back. That's a high honor for that company. Absolutely. I tell you, Steve Payne, he's the owner. Um, he's got to be one of the main reasons that I decided to come, uh, just the way he would talk. Uh, one thing he always talks about because, you know, again, I've, I've said before, our Facebook page gets lit up all the time. When are you going to franchise out to Nashville? When are you going to franchise up to Chicago? When are you going to have a Quattro's location in St. Louis or Los Angeles or wherever else? Steve has never once considered franchising. Not because he couldn't do it. He absolutely could be way, way wealthier than he is right now if he wanted to franchise. I see no reason they wouldn't be successful but he has such pride in his pizza and being the one destination that you can get Quattro's pizza. And he does not want to, as he would say, water down the product. If he can't be there to observe and keep strict uh, control, and not that he's you know, somebody that's, I'm blanking on a good word for it. He, he's not an authoritarian kind of a leader, but if he's not there to keep an eye on things, then somebody could be associating his name with a lesser product, and he's not okay with that. So you can only get Quattro's Pizza in one place, Southern Illinois. You know, that reminds me of, uh, of another place over there in Murfreesboro, 17th Street yep. Barbecue. Yeah, Mike Mills. Yeah, 
uh, he's he's very happy, proud of of what he has accomplished. People yeah. travel from all over the world to learn from him, don't they? Absolutely. He, I believe, now he does have four restaurants, and I think two of them are in Las Vegas. I knew one was in Las Vegas. I, I took a hospitality class toward the end of my degree, and what one, one of my uh, the, the hospitality professor he actually worked under Mike Mills. If I remember correctly, he said that he owns four restaurants, uh, I think two in Vegas and two in this area. Um, 17th Street Barbecue has one Murfreesboro location and one Marion location, both of which are Southern Illinois. But yeah, he's he's not gone super far. Uh, there are worldwide barbecue competitions that take place in Murfreesboro, Illinois, a town of uh, 10,000, 8,000, something like that. Uh, in fact, I was a judge um, for one of those competitions. Not not like a there's three people up kind of thing, but I, I went through and tested several different seasonings, several different barbecue sauces. Um, it was it was specifically a competition for the sauce and seasonings, and you would just sit at a table. It was a blind test. You couldn't see the labeling. You couldn't see anything. You were just ranking it based on uh, appeal and taste and mouthfeel best extra credit assignment I ever got. It was free to go get free barbecue and I got extra credit for it. I, I don't know how I got lucky into that one, but yeah, they, they host these competitions in Murfreesboro, Illinois all the time because Mike Mills started a great barbecue chain. Yeah. I, I would love to get him on the show. I I'm really impressed. Actually, I think his daughter does a lot of the uh, marketing and, and everything else. So I'd love to talk to her, but uh, just so impressive, such a great story, small town. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you mentioned that there are about 10,000 over there in Murfreesboro. Carbondale is not much more than that. No, I mean, obviously we're doing the census this year, so we're going to have a much better no- knowledge about the new stats um, coming up soon. But the 2010 census, that the number on the Welcome to Carbondale sign is uh, 25,000. And that's during the summer. So it, it almost doubles when school's in session, right? Uh, currently, the SIU student body population is around 12,000. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's it's down there. Yeah. We'll have to work on that. SIU needs some love. As, SIU has had a little bit of a history the past few years of, of some struggles, um, but there are very positive signs right now that they're working in the right direction. I mean, I think most of the country knows that Illinois has had its struggles, and SIU being a state school is part of the state of Illinois. They've taken a little bit of that hit as well. So I think as Illinois kind of hopefully shifts into some progress in working on their issues and as SIU does as well, hopefully we'll start to see some some positive momentum on that enrollment because we absolutely have the room. We absolutely have the quality school. We absolutely have a beautiful school. I talk about the rolling hills of, of the wine trails. SIU is sitting on that property, you know. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some really good hiking trails. In oh, yeah, Arizona. Absolutely. Uh, if you're a, if you're if you're somebody that really likes to be active, uh, another thing that this area is great for um, hiking and I mean SIU has two f- disc golf courses. I mean yeah. they 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 love to to brag about it. and they have a very good forestry school, a recreational sciences school. Um, so we're ab- they're in agriculture, a big agriculture school. So. Uh, being a part of this earth is a big thing for SIU. I actually learned about Panther's Den through the forestry school. I volunteered. Uh, I think it was through uh, the, uh, I forgot the name of it. The, the SIU. Ah, uh, it's, it's with Touch of nature. Well, yeah, we went out there and, and we helped with Panther's Den doing a trail cleanup. Mm-hmm. That was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So fun fact, like, I don't know if you know this, but my second date with your dad, we went hiking. And he took Was that me the hiking. first time you ever went hiking? No, I like to hike. <laughs> I don't like I'm to. I'm just teasing. I'm just I don't teasing. like to camp. <laughs> okay. 
But we went hiking and we stopped at one of the, the the local wineries and I had a peach wine. It was the first time I had wine that I actually liked. <laughs> and I, um, um, I that really sounds like. uh, Headman's Winery. It wasn't one that was on the trail. I know I think it was like. It's- that sounds yeah. like Edmonds. It's like it was like a baby winery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it I think it was Head. It might have been Edmonds. I it think was it's Edmonds. Towards Anna on. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was Edmonds. I think you're uh, right. They they're pretty well known for their fruit wines and and yeah. very very sweet wines. I yeah. I would not enjoy that wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. It's it's not for me. Yeah, uh, they had some really good food, though. They it was more of a German kind of uh, influence on the food. Okay. It might have been Hedman's. I don't know. It, it was so. I'm trying to remember the roads. There's a road that goes from from uh, Murfreesboro down towards Anna. I can't remember the name of the road. There's 51 that goes from Carbondale down to. The Anna area. You're talking about 127. 127. Okay, yeah. so on the south end of 127 near Anna is where that winery was, and I can't remember which one it was. I think that one is at Headman. You're you're talking about the um, head of the road to go up to uh, Bald Knob Cross. There's there. It's, it's basically on the intersection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very close to. Yeah, they had some really good food. Um, with German influence at mm-hmm. that time, I don't know Lots what they do now, but... and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bavarian yeah. style pretzel. Yeah, and that's part of it. You know, you said that you don't really like the sweet wine, but it depends on what you pair it with. Well, you know, yes, absolutely. If you put it with the right food, it can be amazing. Speaking of food, I, I started to get to this before. You guys didn't really necessarily grow up cooking. I we did a little cook. bit, but I definitely was never. You weren't a chef per se. You, sure. you, you could go in the kitchen, throw something together, you're good. What what did you struggle with the most when you first started actually really truly getting invested in cooking? Um this kind of goes with another question that I saw you you know, he kind of re- pre-writes some questions just so I have an idea of where this might go and and one of them was what is the thing that you wish you would have known when you first got into cooking and for me that's spice is cheap uh oil butter it's it's not super expensive if you think you're not adding enough you should probably add more don't don't be on the conservative side season that stuff um i i used to kind of sprinkle a little here shake a little there okay i've got some seasoning here now i've got a little bit of flavor I will absolutely just pour it on, especially if I'm trying to smoke some meats or something that the outer shell of a a cut of pork should be just absolutely loaded down with seasoning. Um, When I'm trying to, to cook something to pan fry something oil or butter don't I'm I've gotten a lot more liberal with that than I used to be. It's interesting. You brought up the pork. I'm, I'm getting ready. We're having some guests over on Saturday. And I just picked up a, uh, a pork butt, Boston butt, pork mm-hmm. shoulder. How, I've made a few of those. Yeah. Names. So, um, and then we have the, uh, the pellet grill. So we're going to be smoking that for a good seven, eight hours. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that. I've done some really good briskets on there, but I haven't done a good pulled pork on there. Um, I've, I've done a four pulled porks now and i don't have a smoker i've just got to go with oven but for me um low and slow and of course I, the last two or three hours of the cooking of it you want to wrap it in foil and make sure those juices can't escape if you keep it open air the entire time i think you're risking losing some of it see so so when you smoke when, when you actually have a smoker, the best thing you can do is keep it open air for about three fourths of the time. And then you put it in what's called peach butchered paper. Okay. And that allows the smoke to come into it, but it also holds in the juices. So that's the same thing, but out. allowing the foil or allow it. I gotcha. Yeah. That, that butcher paper is 
the key. I've used that on the brisket. It makes all the difference in the world. Okay. It's such a nice bark on it. It's amazing. I've got to get a smoker someday. I, I don't have the outdoor space for it right now, but I can't wait to be able to get a, a, a smoker. Or you could sure. just come and visit me and your dad. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Uh, I want to travel other places. <laughs> if you I've been to Orlando a lot. If you only knew somebody that owned a travel agency. <laughs> if we're ever allowed to travel again, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we will <Right>? help you. <laughs> so is there an area of, of foodiness that you're like really curious about, you want to start working towards figuring out. All right, foodie fans, thanks for tuning in. Check us out next Tuesday for part two of this fantastic foodies interview. Bryce, you jerk, we want to know the answer. <laughs> well, great, hit subscribe. Fine, but you're sleeping on the couch. Mm -hmm.